Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of building an Ember.js app. In the last video, we set everything up. We created our routes for tasks and for new task. Um, we created our controllers for task and new task. Now what we're gonna do is set up the model. All right, so let's go back to the command line and stop the server. And we're gonna say Ember G model and we're gonna say task, okay? And you want it to be singular. Models should be singular. So we'll go ahead and create that. All right, and then we're gonna say ember serve. And let's go and check the model file out. So under app and then models, we have task.js. All right, and this is where we're going to uh, create our schema, kind of, I guess it's a schema. Uh, the fields that we want. And this line here, we're importing Ember Data. Ember Data is a library that comes with Ember that um, is really powerful and gives us the concept of stores. Okay, so um, we can say things like this.store.create or uh, delete or whatever we want to do. All right, so in here, what we're going to do is set our fields. So we want a title. And we're going to say title is ds dot attribute or adder, and then the type of field that this is going to be. So this is going to be a string. All right, and then we'll do a comma, and we're just going to fill all these in. So body, I'm sorry, we're going to do description, and that's going to be ds dot adder, and that's also going to be a string. All right, and then we're gonna have a date, and that's gonna be ds.adder, and this is gonna be a date type. All right, and then finally, we're gonna have a created, and this is gonna be, um, this is gonna compute automatically. It's just going to return the current date and time. All right, so to do that, uh, we'll say ds, dot adder and we're going to format this as a string but um, we're going to pass in some values we're going to pass in a default value and that's going to be a function and all we want to do here is return new date okay so that's going to just put the current date and time into created all right, so let's go ahead and save that. And then the next thing I want to do is create, um, not create, but install Emberfire. All right, so we're going to go back to our command line. And all we have to do here is say Ember install Emberfire. All right, and it knows what to do from there. Not only will it install Emberfire, but it'll also set up our adapter to connect and um, basically just talk to our Firebase database. All right, so that is now installed. So let's go and run Ember Serve. And now you should notice if you go in App and you now have a folder called Adapters. And if we go to Application JS. This is the Firebase adapter that was created for us. We don't have to touch anything in here. I just wanted to show you, um, and you should also verify that you have that. All right, so what we do need to do is go to our config folder and then environment.js, and we have to add a couple things here. All right, so one is gonna be the content security policy. We want to basically tell our application that it can deal with Firebase IO. All right, so uh, we're going to say content security policy. All right, and we're going to set that. We want to set connect dash source. And then we want to do self in single quotes. And then WSS slash slash. Um, anything which is the asterisk dot 
firebaseio.com. Okay, so any subdomain of firebaseio.com. All right, and then the next thing we have to set up is just Firebase itself. So we're going to say Firebase, and we want to set that to our Firebase URL, which is mine is right here. Yours will be different, but this is where you can get it. Okay, and we'll just paste that right in there. And that should be good. So we'll save that. All right, and we're going to have to restart our server. And now <clears throat> we can continue where we left off in the last video, which is in the, uh, where was it? Is it controller? Yeah, the new controller. All right, so right here. So we're going to say var new task, and we're going to set it to this dot store dot create record. All right, so this is all utilizing Ember data. So this is going to be the model we want is task model, and then we want to specify all our fields. So title is going to be the title variable description and date. Now date, we're going to say new date and then pass in the date variable. Okay. So that's that. Now to save to Firebase, we need to just say new task dot save. All right. And then finally, we want to clear the form and we can do that with this dot set properties and then we can pass in each property we want to set so title set to nothing uh, description and date all right so let's save that and let's go back to M tasks and do a reload All right, so we'll say new task, and let's call it my first task, and set the date. Okay, description. This is my first task, submit. Okay, so we submitted it. Now we're not gonna see it down here yet because we haven't added anything to the tasks view or the task template. If we go to Firebase, you'll now see we have tasks we open that up we have this this record and now we have our title description the date and then the created date and time all right so uh, the create dates December 13th the date we set is going to be December 15th all right so that's working perfectly so far okay but now we want to make it so that it shows up down here as well so let's go to routes and then to tasks and this is going to be very simple we're just going to provide our model and that's going to be a function and we can just say return this dot store dot find all and we're going to pass in the method which is task so that's going to get all the tasks for us save that Let's now go to the view or the template, which is in templates and then tasks.hbs. And let's go under this heading and let's do our loop. So we're going to say each, uh, each task in model. Then down here, we want to end the each. All right, each task in model. So this model right here is coming from, if we go to the route, it's coming from uh, this right here. All right, and this is returning all tasks. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do here, let's create a div. We'll give it a class, bootstrap class of panel. I'm sorry, not panel, well. Okay, and let's do 
uh, h4 and this is where we'll put out the title so for that we should be able to say task dot title all right and then the description let's put that in a paragraph and we'll say task dot description all right so let's see what happens there if we go to home let's reload it okay so there's our task now if we go ahead and look at our console um, you should have an ember tag here do I not have oh there it is okay so if we click on that it's going to give us all this information uh, on our tasks. We have the template that dis that's displaying. We have the controller that it's in. Um, the that stuff doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we can also see the different routes that are available. So we have tasks, task dot new, task dot error. If we click data, we're going to be able to see all the data that's coming in the task along with with its ID. Now notice that we didn't we didn't define an ID in the model. This ID is coming from the Firebase API itself. All right, so we have an ID, a title, description, date created. Okay, so this this little uh, Ember tool is really handy. All right, and let's go ahead and also include the date. All right, so let's do small. And so let's do task dot date. And let's just put in do. Whoops, not die, do. Uh, oh, we, I misspelled this. It should be task dot date. All right, so there's our date. Uh, it's it doesn't look too nice because it's not formatted at all. Um, so what we can do is we can install something called Moment, which is a date formatter. So yeah, let's do that real quick. All right, so we can actually use Bower to do that as well. So we'll say Bower install Moment. Now, just like we did with Bootstrap, we have to include this in Ember CLI build. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. Okay, and then we're just going to change from here on. So this is going to be in moment, uh, moment slash min slash moment uh, dot min dot js all right and that should include it and we should be able to use it now so let's close that all right and one thing we're gonna have to do is uh, write a date formatter so the easiest way to do that is to put it in a helper all right so up here you can see we have helpers so we're gonna go ahead and create a new file and let's save this as format uh, format date dot js all right and we'll say we have to do our just import ember from ember okay and then export function we could have actually generated a helper just like we did with the controller and stuff but um, this is fine too so function format date okay we're going to pass in params and then we're going to return moment params and we want the zero index and then we're going to say dot format and the moment js uh, documentation has all different types of formats you can use 
Uh, I'm just going to do something really simple. We'll do year, month, day. All right, and then we just got to export so that we can use this elsewhere. We'll say export default ember dot helper dot helper and then pass in format date and that should do it. So let's save it and that should be available to us now. So right in the task template where we have the date this due date right here, we should be able to say uh, format, oops, format date. Oh, we gotta start the server. All right, so I'm getting an error, and it looks like um, wait a second. I think that this this format date should should have the hyphen. Yeah, something's wrong. So let's just change that. Change that to format dash date. All right, so it's still blank. Let me just check that helper again. Uh, return moment params. Oh, this parentheses shouldn't be back here. It should end right here, like that. There we go. All right, so the date looks a little better. At least it doesn't have the time zone and all that. Uh, but you can go to momentjs.org, I think, and look for different types of formats. All right, so there we get a task. Now, when we create a new task, it should automatically just show up down there. All right, so let's say my second task. Okay, we'll set that for 17 and we'll say this is my second task. Submit. And there we go. Shows up right away. If we reload, it should still be there. Yep. All right, so that's working great. Now, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is we're going to want to be able to edit our tasks. All right. So I want to be able to click one and it should open a form just like this with the title and description in there. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the date in there just because of the whole formatting issue, um, but uh, we'll give it a shot. So that's what we'll do in the next part.